Hello and welcome to or back to my channel. Today we are going to be looking at chapter 4 of Michelle Easton's How to Raise a Conservative Daughter. Chapter 4 is titled Hard Work is a Virtue and um, yeah there is of course no sources because what do we need sources for? So let's just dive on in. One of the most consistent themes I've seen in young women who've turned out to be strong conservatives is that they had jobs when they were young. It's important to encourage your daughter to do the same. On that note, speaking of jobs, I also recommend, per Michelle's request, that you grab yourself some coffee. My coffee mug is from one of the local cat cafes. Yeah. And it, it's probably going to be necessary to have some coffee while reading through this chapter. All right, so grab your coffee. I'll wait. Just kidding. You all have to pause me. But if the left had its way, Democratic Congresswoman from New York, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, would be the pattern after which we would all raise our daughters to think and believe. Um, she does know that there's like a wide variety of people, not just in the United States, but in the left as well, right? I mean, we have no desire to turn out little like carbon copy soldiers or some such nonsense. If that sentence makes you shudder, it should, particularly as it relates to how her radical policy beliefs would irrevocably alter tra traditional American notions about the value and importance of work. Well, in my opinion, <laughs> the traditional American notions about value and the importance of work should change. Consider the left's Green New Deal scheme, which Ocasio-Cortez em emphatically advances. It's the perfect symbol for how the left fundamentally misunderstands the virtue of hard work. I would love to know what Michelle considers hard work. Just work in general? Borrowing from President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal, an explosion of public programs meant to lift the country out of the Great Depression, liberals are attempting to... Is it liberals or the left? Because there are two different things. Liberals are attempting to transform society under the guise of environmentalism and climate change. Banning fossil fuels and imposing strict energy mandates on homes and businesses is necessary to shift the United States to an all-renewable energy utopia in 10 years. Um, it's not a utopia, it's so that we don't die from climate change. The takeover is so ambitious that even FDR would blush. I'm sorry, so Americans should value hard work, but we should not be ambitious? What? <laughs> Set aside for a moment that a partial transition to renewables in California has led to a large-scale electricity blackout and some of the most expensive utility bills in the country. I'm sorry, what happened in Texas over the past winter? Are we going to mention that? Also, I seem to recall Enron having something to do with the uh, problems in California back in 2003. Crushing costs and suffocating regulations, they would neither crush nor suffocate because it's not like they would suddenly happen overnight. It would be a gradual rollout. I don't understand why they can't, they can understand that they just pretend not to, to get people angry and, and scared so that they will agree with them. Well. Still, it's dumb that she is using fear to promote her agenda. <sighs> Crushing costs and suffocating regulations would hollow up business and employment opportunities across America. Has she been to the Midwest? But AOC has a plan. A popular socialist and chief advocate of the Green New Deal, Ocasio-Cortez says the government would spend trillions creating new union jobs and providing economic security for all who are unable or unwilling to work. Unwilling to work? A conservative can never say such a thing. It's, it's unthinkable. Work is about creating value, not just showing up to a job you can't get fired from or collecting an entitlement check. It's critical to teach your daughter the difference. Hard work is central to both the American dream and personal development. I just want to take this moment to say that Michelle also thinks it's totally fine to keep the federal minimum wage at seven twenty-five because, you know, so long as you get married, two people can raise two kids off the federal minimum wage. It provides dignity and fulfillment. Okay, Michelle needs to get out of her bubble because there are plenty of jobs that take your dignity and provide no fulfillment. Has she ever worked in customer service? Work is an opportunity to help others earn income and support one's family. Hmm. Conservatives want government out of the way so that individuals can create jobs and opportunity. That's why your daughter must learn the true value of work. Yeah, if conservatives had their way, minimum wage would be, I don't know, what, what the, whatever the possible least is an employer could pay, 
There would be no benefits. There would be no protections for your job. There would be no safety regulations. Think about your first job. Does it make you smile? Many adults have fond memories of their first working experiences because they learned to be valuable outside of their family. Whether bagging groceries, waiting tables, mowing yards, or babysitting, people depended on your effort and they paid for it. Yeah, my first job does not make me smile. I was a maid. I was paid $5 an hour. Companies don't create jobs to give back to the people. They create jobs because they have a product or products or service they want to sell and they need other people to do it. However, most of the time they don't want to pay enough to make that job worthwhile because it's not enough to help people. You also have to earn a living. It also feels good to earn money and serve others, but it's also an education. When I was 16 years old, I started working at the local movie theater on weekends as the candy and popcorn stand girl. So when she was 16 years old, it was 19, 1966. Minimum wage was about 125, and after receiving my paycheck, I remember thinking, what happened? Taxes had eaten into my tiny check, and it was so disappointing. My dad was right. He spoke about the economy, taxes, and wasteful programs that really delivered as promised. Suddenly, th those were no longer academic discussions. I was thrust into the, to the real world. But my parents taught me to work hard and fight for what I wanted, which apparently is low to no taxes. The beauty of such lessons is that they set, up, they set girls up for happiness and success later in life. Hard work is foundational. Hard work made America great, and it can make your daughter great too. Our country was built with a can-do spirit and the promise of a better life if you are willing to work for it. Despite the naysayers, that remains true. Opportunities to succeed are more abundant than ever, and girls shouldn't take for granted that they, what they have inherited. Uh, I would disagree, considering how hard I am trying to get a promotion, and it's just not happening. And pretty much the only jobs that I can find right now, despite this being the great resignation, are jobs that will pretty much pay me the exact same thing that I'm making now, which is not the point of changing jobs. In previous generations, most of them were expected to be housewives. They took care of children, cooked meals, did the laundry, and kept a lovely home. That was their job, and they were proud because it was hard. Being a housewife is still a wonderful calling, but today women have near unlimited career choices. Your daughter will choose her own path, but her success will, will hinge on her approach to work, and that's mostly learned at home. Parents have different attitudes on the issue, even among conservatives. Some are diligent taskmasters, and others are hands-off. Many parents know the value of a job, but they want to protect their children. They fear a job could pull their daughter away from school or exposure to people who don't care for her best interests. Here's the bottom line. Whatever your daughter does, she needs to work hard and do her best. In many families, that means getting up early, going to school, getting good grades, excelling at extracurricular activities, and a part-time job. No excuses. School must come first because it shapes thinking and brings about the most opportunity. Extracurricular activities in a job are secondary, but still very important. When parents worry about stress and overcommitment, they should look at how their daughter spends time when she's not studying. Many girls waste exorbitant amounts of time, often in unhealthy ways. Yes, children need to rest and enjoy themselves, but idleness, social media excess, and other peer pressured activities can eat up many hours. This just reminds me of something I read at some point over the past year about how the ability to be able to just sit and be with yourself is how many great ideas come to a person, which Michelle apparently does not care about. Most concerns that come from a job or voluntary service commitment pale in comparison. There's also an expression that, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. That quality will pay huge dividends in life and can develop in childhood where a girl is expected to study and make positive use of her time. Keep in mind that every job involves a learning curve and a skill set. They also require dealing with people and problem solving. The benefit is that girls start to develop self-reliance and are more apt to avoid the trap of looking for someone to take care of them when they grow up. If only I can be pretty enough, then I'll find a rich husband. Obviously, little good can come from that. Well, I do agree that you should not bank your future on being pretty so you can find a wealthy husband. Earning money, developing confidence, and honing people skills will, develop, will help your daughter forge a more independent path. Work further teaches personal responsibility. It's a foundational tra trait for every mature person, though it's often in short supply. There will be times when school, activities, a job, and social desires are in conflict, but making excuses and expecting to be bailed out don't work, don't wash especially when other people are depending on your daughter. Failing to show up and perform at a job, for example, will involve consequences. That's a good thing. Help your daughter face the situation and do her best. Talk with her about accepting responsibility and decision-making. And if a situation is painful, support her knowing that she's developing character. If you put your daughter to work, she's much more likely to turn out conservative. I've seen it over and over again. Girls learn that the things they want aren't going to fall from the sky. They have to earn them. 
That lesson obliterates helplessness in the, in the entitlement mentality. It also makes them vigilant about government. Conservatives believe that hard work should benefit the worker, not wasteful programs or, or favored political constitu constituencies. The more time your daughter spends earning, the more government will take. Ask her where she thinks the money is going and if it's well spent. Chances are she will become aware that government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem, as President Reagan said. All of a sudden, too good to be true proposals like the Green New Deal won't be so seductive. It's so funny. She's all like, America's wonderful. America's great. But she actually really hates America. Politicians like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders depend on youthful ignorance, but your daughter will see what's really going on, offering free stuff in exchange for freedom. I do wish they would stop saying that things would be free because we all very well know that they're going to be paid for by taxes. I would love to know if Michelle thinks our military budget is, you know, at just the right amount or if she might, if she might consider it overinflated. It's just so weird though. Now it's too good to be true. We should never dare dream big. And also as someone, you know, who works, personally, I don't want to work with someone who doesn't want to be there. The career mom homemaker debate. When discussing the concept of work, it's important to address the discussion in some conservative circles in some conservative circles over the decision to be a career mom or a stay-at-home mom or a mix of the two. This is, of course, a deeply personal decision every family must make for themselves. What's more, the liberal media likes to pit one side against the other as if both sides were advers adversaries who stood in judgment of each other. Let's cut through the noise. For many families, the decision whether mom works outside the home is purely economic. A one paycheck income is simply not enough and therefore mom must earn a paycheck. For those who can afford to choose, some highly successful women put their careers on hold to stay home with their children, while others feel called to continue making an impact at work while raising their kids. Both paths are noble and worthy of respect. Every woman must follow her calling. I do, however, think that some conservatives talk a lot about the virtues of moms staying home and not enough about the virtues of conservative women with careers in public policy and the culture. There is another dimension to family life, the good a woman can do for all families and for her country with her work. Well, I'm glad to hear that she doesn't advocate for, people, for women staying home simply because they're women. And Michelle goes on to state an example of um, some time when she spent weeks driving across the Commonwealth of Virginia. <laughs> she couldn't just say Virginia. As president of the Virginia State Board of Education for Governor George Allen. She apparently was working to beef up academic standards taught and then tested for thousands of children in public schools all over Virginia. We shifted the curriculum and testing from social studies to rigorous and truthful history. Right. During those four years... Her kids and husband missed her, and it was hard for her because she just started the Claire Booth Loose Center, but her family knew that her time on the road was helping all Virginia kids, not just her own. And at the same time, she was taping Dr. James Dobson's radio show in Colorado when he was writing Focus on the Family. He asked me to be on his show because, since I was a rare conservative woman, head of a state board of education, he wanted a conservative woman's insight on some of the key education and family issues. She also goes on to say Jean Kirkpatrick and Margaret Thatcher. If Thatcher had spent more time at home, Britain would have been a very different place. Huh. What I am suggesting is that conservative women in the workforce can have a tremendous impact for good. If all conservative women were at home with no conservative women leaders in the workplace, other left-wing women, of whom there are legions, legions, really, fill the vacuum. And it's not just policy careers. Conservative women in entertainment and news can make a tremendous impact as well. It's all about conservative moms, career moms and homemakers, appreciating each other and the unique and important work God has called them each to. Doing so teaches daughters they have an array of options and opportunities. That's a win-win for conservative girls. Whether moms work outside or inside the home or a mix of both, the key is modeling a strong work ethic. Okay, so I mean, I like the message that, you know, just because you're conservative and a woman, you don't have to stay at home with the kids. Role modeling work ethic. Most kids learn by watching their parents. Imparting work ethic to your daughter is about leadership and being a healthy role model. It's a lot harder for a girl to slack when she knows her parents get up early every day and work to support her. What if dad or mom decided not to go to work today because they didn't feel like it? Proposing such hypotheticals can make for interesting discussions, prompting your daughter to think things through. That's why we have PTO and sick time. I like the way motivational speaker and author Brian Tracy puts it. Good habits are hard to form, but easy to live with. Bad habits are easy to form, but hard to live with. If kids don't see their parents working, it's difficult for them to develop a strong work ethic. They are set up to underperform and fail. And if children are not fortunate enough to grow up and rely on their parents to meet their needs, then government often becomes a provider. Both paths lead to an entitlement trap, which is essentially the belief that, if, that you don't have to work to get things, they should just be given to you. You can imagine how that mentality plays out politically. Shamefulest politicians promise bigger and bigger benefits, schools supply the narrative that denying them is wrong, 
and potent constituencies start demanding free stuff as if it were a right instead of something to earn. When successful, new entitlements are accompanied by an increase in government, which sells the economy with greater taxes and regulation, and the private sphere of life is further reduced. That's how socialism works. No. It's interesting that conservatives are able to have any success, given that one side of the political spectrum promises to give people things if they vote for them, while the other side says no. I suspect that work, that work ethic has a lot to do with it, or gerrymandering. The left likes to divorce earning from having to work. But I thought there were legions of left women that would happily fill in roles that conservative women didn't want if conservative women decided to stay at home. So either we hate to work or there's a lot of us working. So I need to pick one. What should parents do when their daughter isn't doing her best? If she's phoning in at school, not hustling in sports, and just not pulling her weight at home, consequences should follow. Most of the time, punishments and rewards go a long way. But, say, but saying a good example is still the best way to teach work ethic. Children learn by seeing and then by doing. A brief story. If you want to raise a successful daughter, you are going to have to encourage her work ethic and show her how it pays off. I tell young women that hard work is the minimum and that if they want to get ahead, they have to do more than what's expected. I graduated from college with a degree in psychology with a K through sixth grade teaching certificate. My father was adamant that if he helped pay for my college, of course he did, that I had to graduate and be prepared for a job. That sounds so logical, it's almost funny. But there is an approach to higher education today where students are encouraged to indulge their academic whims irrespective of employment considerations. You go to college to get the education you want. The problem is that many students leave feeling accomplished only to find only to find out that their six-figure gender studies degree qualifies them for low-level government work or being a coffee shop barista. Rather than accept responsibility for a bad decision, they default to their university training and claim victimhood. Okay, so for one... I cannot believe Michelle sees nothing wrong with what colleges charge today for, you know, an education. Two, what is with the gender studies? There's not that many gender studies degrees being given out. Three, low-level government work. Is that not an entry-level job? Is that not worthwhile? I mean, a lot of entry-level jobs nowadays require a college degree. It doesn't matter what the degree is in. They just want you to have it. I don't know why, because I don't have one. So those jobs I do not apply for, because obviously they do not apply to me. But it does open, no matter what the degree is in, it does open more doors than not having the degree. So Michelle started to be a teacher because, you know, her dad was all for it. But she realized it wasn't for her. And she had been bitten by the policy bug while volunteering for Young Americans for Freedom. So she moved to DC for a chance to be more involved. And then she was hired as a receptionist, which is another entry level job. I knew I was capable of much more and there were two ways of looking at the situation. I could get angry and entitled or I could earn my way up the ladder. There's nothing wrong with being a receptionist. Well, that's nice because I currently am a receptionist. <laughs> All honest work deserves respect, but I certainly wasn't satisfied. First, I was grateful for the opportunity. Yes. And even though I had to spend a lot of the day answering the phone, well, thankfully we don't have to do that. I committed to working hard and con contributing. That foundation had already been laid. It turns out that the position was a great vantage point to see what was going on. I learned who did what, who had the titles, and who made the important decisions. And of course, she also met her husband at work, which, why does this not surprise me? She wrote an editorial to a local rock and roll radio station that also lets people come in and record them if they were selected. The topic was how the metro transportation system used to be private, and I argued that private ownership was preferable to government control. So people recognized her and that raised her profile. And then she wrote about the ERA, which was published in the YAF issue paper. And then she wrote another, Demonopolize the Post Office, that was also published. And then she received a promotion. My message to aspiring girls is you start where you start, you do what's assigned, then you work late and nights and weekends and do lots more. That's how you move up. That is a bunch of bullshit. Do's and don'ts of teaching work. One of the worst things you can do is complain about your job in front of your daughter. It's easy to vent and most parents don't realize what they are doing when they say, I hate my boss, they don't pay me enough for this grief, or I'd quit if I could afford it. Even if it's justified, the potential damage can be corrupting. Yeah, how dare your daughters learn that, you know, they're most likely worth more than what they're going to be paid. My dad was a business administrator for Harry Guggenheim at the Solemn R. Guggenheim Foundation in my childhood years. There were challenges, but he told his children how he loved his position, and it was good for my three siblings and me to hear that. Kids learn by listening and watching, and when work is a villain, you create a negative association that can have long-term repercussions. You are seeing work as, as a necessary evil, not an opportunity and a blessing. Really? Is it a blessing to be made? Is it a blessing to be a cashier? I mean, there is no doubt that some work can be rewarding and fulfilling, but 
it's disingenuous to pretend that all work is the same. You can also use workplace frustrations as teachable moments and model the behavior you would want from your daughter if she were facing a similar situation. It might be worth praying about or including in a family discussion. Parents should also maintain a work-life balance to the best of their ability. Feminism tells girls that they don't need a family or that marriage and kids can wait because their career should come first. I tell girls that they can be stay-at-home moms or successful working mothers or a mix of both. It's up to them, but whatever they choose, hard work is required. Apparently kids are also required since Michelle doesn't say she also tells them they don't have to have kids if they don't want to. There were times while raising my kids when home life on a weekend was so hectic and demanding that I couldn't wait until Monday because my job was less challenging. At home moms don't have that outlet. <laughs> oh, so those, those red pill men who say that, you know, women would be happiest at home raising kids and that's how they can change the world and other such nonsense would probably strongly disagree with Michelle. Although sometimes I wonder if those types of men are afraid of women and that's why they want women to stay home with their kids. That way they're not out in the world competing with these men. The key is balance and that can look different ways. You can be a plumber, a brain surgeon, or president of the United States, but you don't have to make your daughter an afterthought. Spouses may need to divide family duties and rely on grandparents if possible. Babysitters, nannies, and other options are often essential as sacrifices and creative solutions are part of the work-life tension. You may not be able to make every sports game or family dinner, but doing your best, no matter how tired you are, will set an example. An allowance is one of the best tools to teach your work ethic. It functions like a job. Your daughter does her assigned chores and gets $10 a week, for example. Allowance is pretty standard and easy to understand. The point is she has to earn her spending money. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, though it is funny because this is so obviously geared toward middle to upper class people. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, an allowance for chores performed is, you know, fine. Offering incentives if your daughter wants like new clothes or a fancy purse by creating an add-on list of jobs and projects that involve more responsibility is fine. It's just so weird they act as though this is a conservative thing. When I'm pretty sure families that lean left also do this. Then she goes into the car debate. And if you're wondering, Michelle says it's better to wait until their daughter has left the house to allow her to get a car. Call me old school, but girls can borrow mom or dad's vehicle if they need transportation and parents can better to monitor their daughter's driving while she's a teenager. Parents should also be careful about reinforcing stereotypes. Boys like trucks and dolls are for girls. I'm all for it. <sighs> but it's not a good thing when different standards are applied to work. Boys and girls are not the same, but their work ethic should be. Why not assign your daughter yard work and garbage duty once in a while? I can assure you she's capable of more than just laundry and baking cookies. This leads to another important aspect of teaching girls about work. No job is beneath her. Ditch diggers and dishwashers deserve the same respect as investment bankers and corporate executives. Jesus was a carpenter and his disciples included several fishermen. All honest work is honorable. Whatever your daughter does with respect to school, activities, job, and chores, do not let her quit. There are always exceptions, like when her health or safety are at risk, but as a rule, quitting is a terrible habit. The impulse usually comes from fear, insecurity, boredom, or frustration, but it's so important to push through. Letting your daughter drop out of a tough situation reinforces the idea that she can give up if something is difficult. Imagine taking that approach with a career or marriage. So yeah, I disagree with this one. When I was in sixth grade, I had to transfer to a different school per mother's desire. And in a misguided attempt to make friends, I joined the basketball team, which was a mistake as I am not really very sporty. And after, a, I don't know, like a week, I realized that one, I hate basketball and two, I was not actually making any friends, but my mom forbid me to quit because I guess, I don't know, I think she shared some belief here with Michelle that if you allow someone to quit something, I don't know, it will set them up for failure in their future life. But um, as a 12 year old, all it did was give me the fear of trying something new because if I didn't like it, then I couldn't quit. So much of raising a conservative daughter is about teaching responsibility as opposed to all those, you know, left daughters who don't know anything about responsibility. My bills are always paid late and that's a joke by the way and preventing your girl from tucking tail and running away from hardship. As the saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's the classic American way. Give your daughter options and let her explore as many opportunities as she wants and as you can afford. But once she starts something, push her to finish. If you haven't had the experience of a child resisting what they have started, you probably will. And down the road, your daughter will thank you for not letting her off the hook. I can't tell you how gratifying those moments are. I should actually just tell my mom what a big mistake she made making me stay in that basketball team. I pretended to be sick so many days to get out of going to games. 
And in fact, I had one boy tell me, it was a girls basketball team, but a boy took it upon himself to threaten me that, you know, I better be at the game that night or else, which was funny because I spent most of my time at games on the bench. So it's not like I was really an asset to the team. So that is it for this one. I like that Mich- I say this in the next chapter, but I like that Michelle doesn't believe in reinforcing stereotypes and she doesn't think that women should stay home because they are women. But the next chapter is a woman's differences are her strengths. Anyway, um, so that is it. Please feel free to let me know in the comments below what you thought of this chapter. I think I got a little heated during it, but some of the things she says are just so ridiculous. I mean, and wasn't it just the previous chapter that she was waxing poetic about the ideals that the U.S. was founded upon? And now she's like, we can't have this ambitious plan. Everybody will become entitled and not work anymore, which I really don't think is true. People will still work. It just the jobs that they work will change. And we can't go back to the 1950s, Michelle. That, that ship has sailed. We need to we need to innovate if you want to keep up with the rest of the world. And I don't understand why she and other conservatives don't understand that. So yeah, now I'm actually done with this video. Please leave a comment below to let me know what you thought of this chapter. And I will see you in the next video.